Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. John. Uh, Up on the wall, we have a couple new banners, and those are explained in the bulletin, so that's kind of a there's something to give thanks to God for. And while we were at it, we pulled out these four banners. Because people are asking, what are these? The short answer is they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So sometimes when we have a gospel reading from one of the gospels, we'll put out the banner that matches. The long answer is that in Ezekiel chapter 1 and in Revelation chapter 4, there are these four living creatures around the throne of heaven. And the four living creatures have the face of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. And the church associated this with the fact that there's one gospel, but it has four faces. And so they assigned one of the faces of these living creatures to each of the four evangelists. That's all I have for you this morning. Now you can turn and greet your brothers and sisters.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment to reflect on our sin and upon God's grace. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, Father in heaven, have mercy upon us.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, the Spirit, to think and do always such things as are right, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without you, may be enabled by you to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Here Jeremiah has prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem because of they, they lack repentance, but the false prophets have said nothing bad will happen. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest, it will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his, hearts, his heart. And in the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets who said, have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 20. Paul said, For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves, and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert remembering that for three years I did not cease, night or day, to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that with these hands they ministered to my necessities and to those who are with me. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of our, the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. 
They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the word that he had spoken that they would not see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We read together. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day again for gathering us together to hear your word. What a privilege it is. Grant that the words that we hear might be truthful and real, that we might be built up in the true faith, and that we might not be led astray by false teaching or understandings, and that our faith may be strengthened and our concern and love for our brothers and sisters and for the whole world might be strengthened, that we might live as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. I remember as a child seeing that sign for poison on bottles. I, I'm not sure you see that too often anymore, but you know that one with the skull? You looked at that and, and you knew danger was here. There's dangerous things to come. And so you avoided it. You know, we had other warnings in our lives about dangerous things. We had those bushes with those tiny little red berries. You remember those berries? And we were always taught those were poisonous. You know, in our little children's mind, we thought we couldn't even hardly touch them without dying. Now, that obviously wasn't true. But it still was, the warning was important, isn't it? We need those things in our life. We, we teach them to our children. We teach them to our grandchildren. We warn one another, even as adults, about what's dangerous and what's coming. That's what makes the gospel reading so important. That's what makes the reading from Acts so important as well. For what Jesus and what Paul are concerned about is the path to heaven. They're concerned that we might get knocked off of that path and that we might lose our faith, we might lose our inheritance to be with God eternally. The two verses before the gospel reading today are very important. Hear what they say. Enter by the narrow gate, Jesus said, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who ent enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Paul warned about it too. He, he talked about after his departure, many people would come in as ravenous wolves to devour them by teaching things that are not true. You see, what the concern that Jesus has, the concern that God's people have, is about others. The concern of Jesus is about you, about me, and about all the people of God, and it's about the whole world. And what he's concerned about is people reaching their heavenly goal, that they reach heaven and live eternally with Jesus. Now, in our society today, we kind of assume everybody's going to end up there, don't we? I hear this all the time. Well, they, they, they didn't really talk about their faith or Jesus, but, and they didn't go to church, but, you know, they were good people. But Jesus says the path is narrow. And he says it is hard because it's about truth. It's about struggle in life as a child of God. It's about understanding that there's going to be opposition to the true faith. And there's going to be people trying to lead us away and from the life of godly living that, that we are told to live as a child of God and where the Spirit would lead us. So the way is narrow even though our world likes to think of it as wide and easy. That's why the world's offended by there's no way to, to God but by Jesus alone. Because they wanted this way to be wide and simple. And what happens, our teachers and others come along and try to widen that path, try to adjust the words of Jesus. Try to adjust the words of Paul and, and, and the apostles and adjust it and widen that path just a little bit. But the problem is, is we're called to walk a narrow way, to follow the teachings of Jesus. I mean, that is where our life started, is in, in the waters of baptism, wasn't it? It was by God entering in. And God taking people who were unable to help themselves and saving them. And what he calls us to do is to remember that, not just as the beginning, but as the whole part of our lives as the children of God. 
And you see, that is exactly why Jesus is so concerned about false teachers. Because they pull people into the ditches. They take them off the narrow path of, of looking to Jesus and him alone and keeping our eyes on the promises that come in Christ and in Christ alone. The false teachers begin to pull us away into false lives. To think that we can live in the ways we desire, that we can follow our own hearts, that we can simply do what we live because God's there to forgive. They lead people in a way, these false teachers, from the Christ of Scripture who calls people to repentance, who calls people to have contrition and sorrow over their sins and an intention to live new lives that have been supplied by the Spirit of God. See, false teachers, you know, try to take us with them into a wider, easier way of life. Now, make no mistake, you know, they look good, and they look holy, and they look pious. But the trouble is, they're not. Their words can sound spiritual, but they're not. They can look like the sheep of God's flock, but they're not. They can sound like sheep of God's flock, but they're not. For their fruit betray them. And the fruit that Jesus is talking about is their teaching. That their teaching leads us away from faith and seeing Christ clearly. And so we are warned by by Jesus. And we're warned by Paul to be aware of these false teachers so they have a great effect on the person who hears and follows the false teaching. The, the effect is great, and it gets to us at a very deep level. For it can lead to despair, false teaching, especially teachings that tell us we can't be sure about Christ's love for us. And then we wonder, can God do anything for us to help us? It can lead to despair, when we are taught so easily and so quickly that we have to live in a legalistic manner. But it can also lead to over-security, to think that nothing can touch us, that we can live and act in the ways we want, that we can be over-secure in the face of danger, that when we are le led and to see a temptation in our lives to thinking that it's not very big, that clicking on that website is not a big deal, to gossip about our neighbors, not a problem. And pretty soon what begins to happen is we get over-secure and to think that nothing can really touch us. False teaching can lead us into uncertainty. Is God for me or is he against me? Does God really love me or not? Our lives don't always look the way they should, so maybe Jesus isn't really for me. See, these are the teachings, or the effects of the teachings. So be aware of these false teachings. Be aware of things that lead us away from Christ. For they're poisonous. They need to have that skull stamped on them so we can know that they lead to death eternally. So you say, okay, pastor, what are some of these things? Well, I've got a list of them. That's what I do as a pastor, make lists. And what are they? Well, here's one. Follow your own heart. We hear that all the time, that all you do is look inside and follow your own heart. But Christ tells us to be cautious of our heart, for by nature our heart produces every evil desire and every evil act that comes. Even as Christians, we are not made perfectly new. Though we desire the things of God, that sin still clings to us, and we so easily walk that way. No, we don't listen to our hearts. We listen to the Word of God, and we cling to it. For that Word alone points us to Jesus. That Word alone shows us our sin. That Word alone shows us that we are saved by the grace of God. You want to know another one? I've heard this said. God does his part. Now you need to do your part. Talk about uncertainty. Did I do enough or not? 
How do I know when I've done enough? I've got to do my part. Does God expect a lot or a little? And in the midst of all of this pious-sounding thing, we lose sight of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. We lose sight of the depth of our sin and the vastness of God's forgiveness in Jesus. You want to hear another one? If you have enough faith, then all the good things you dream of will come to you. Oh, my goodness. That is a popular one in our world, right? If you have enough faith, you will have the riches you desire. If you have enough faith in Christ, then nothing will go wrong with your children or your marriage. If you have enough faith in Christ, then you don't have to worry about retirement, for everything will be easy for you. That's the false teaching of our world in theology and Bible stuff today. But what a farce it is. For Jesus talks about the opposite. Blessed are you when you are persecuted, for you know you will receive the gifts of God. Not in this life, but in the life to come. You see, it takes our eyes off of the faith in Christ, and it places it right back in us. If you believe, if you have enough confidence, if you do the right things, and they forget, well, what we pray week after week and day after day, that our daily bread comes only from God, and it's daily bread that we're promised and no more. Want to hear another one? I hear this one. You can never fall away from faith or lose your salvation. What a horrible teaching. For it leads to a, a dissolute life. It leads to a life that leads to, to betraying God's call to live holy lives. It leads to overconfidence, as if we can live and treat people in any way we desire. That we can blaspheme even against God, and it doesn't matter. Because, well, once saved, always saved. But that's not what God says. He tells us to walk cautiously. For our devil who war our enemy the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and it takes our eyes off of Christ for now we don't need him any longer for once we've been baptized once we have known Christ these false teachers tell us we're fine but we need to walk cautiously Jesus says beware of them for they seek to devour you But then there's another one on the other hand, right? Some people say you can never be sure of your salvation. And that works against faith. That works against taking God at his word. While it is true that you and I can turn our backs on Christ, he will continue to seek us out. His promises are sure. So we look to him in faith and in trust. Now, I could keep going. There are many, many other poisonous teachings that are out there. But this gets us started, doesn't it? And it gets us back to the ground that Jesus was concerned about, that Paul was concerned about, that Peter was concerned about, that John was concerned about throughout the Scriptures. That we recognize both the depth of our sin and the vastness of God You see, whatever takes our eyes off of Jesus, whatever is taught to us to downplay our sin, is not from God. And it's seeking to drag us into the ditch. So we do what we do. We come as Christians, and and in our hearts these days, we bow before God and confess the truth. Dying by nature is sinful and unclean. And we bow in our hearts before God and confess the truth. That God has sent us his son Jesus, in whom is all grace and mercy. And we confess that. And we realize how fragile this faith is. For the world works against us. Our own sinful nature works against us. And Satan produces every possible opportunity he has to try to lead us in the wrong direction. Where does this take us? Well, I remember when my kids were little, 
they'd get scared, they would find one of their parents one day, and they'd hang on to us. And that's what we do. In the face of these dangers, we run back to our Father. We run back to the one Jesus brought us to. And we cling to his promises in Christ and in him alone. Dear friends, the path to heaven is narrow. There's no doubt about it. It's easy to fall and and be drug off that path. So we need to be cautious. False teachers will pull us down or try to. No matter how pious or godly and holy they may sound, no matter how many followers they may appear to have, their teachings don't match the teachings of Jesus and the Bible. And so they will lead us astray. So be careful. False teaching is poisonous. But we have the grace of God in Christ Jesus. And that's the antidote. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. That word in which you warn us and correct us and teach us and comfort us and how you always lead us to Christ. Protect us from all falsehood and place us upon the narrow path of your Son. By your word and spirit, lead us always in your truth unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our congregation and all her members, including those listed in our bulletin. We ask that you would increase our faith, our hope, and our love for one another and that you would grant us all the gifts of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, bless our homes, that they would be places of the word of God in prayer. Be with all marriages and protect them from the evil one. And we thank you this day for the anniversary of Tracy and Rhonda Box. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our prayer. Father, watch over our nation and grant to us peace. We ask that in all things, the church and the gospel would flourish. Be with all those in authority, that they would make wise decisions for the good of all. And watch over our state of Michigan, our cities, our communities, including the city of Detroit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick, who are recovering from various surgeries and injuries, and for all those experiencing various difficulties of life. We pray for Ron Housley, Mark Elliott, Margaret Spencer, Ruth Gutowski, Don Shepler, Jim Mish, and all those we now name in our hearts. Father, grant them healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. And Father, bless our upcoming plans. Bless the school as we look to reopen. Allow a safe and wonderful learning environment where our children can grow and know your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will gather our offerings. You may be seated.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and you laid upon him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he's now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise to new life. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us, and you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate of the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and you have made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you've prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us now as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which will have no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.